In this screencast, I'm going to discuss the for statement, or the for loop, which is used when it's necessary to repeat statements in a script or a function. Now, in the next couple of screencasts, we no longer use the command window to enter our statements. Instead, we'll enter our functions and scripts uh, in the editor window. So for example, so suppose I have typed in the following code. So beep is a function which tells MATLAB to produce a small beep, pauses a function to pause the program execution for, in this case, one second. And this code, as you can see, produces uh, five beeps. So let's run this code. You can execute the code with this green button run. Not surprisingly, there are five beeps produced by this code. Now this code is very inefficient because I'm repeating several statements, identical statements a couple of times. And this is where you can use a for loop to automate the execution. So in this code, I write a for loop and the for loop goes as follows. So it says for i, i is a loop variable or an indicator variable equals one colon five, so for i equals one to five, and then repeat these statements basically five times. And what needs to be repeated is between the for, the start of the for statement and the end statement. So in this case, I'm executing the code beep. I'm printing something to the screen, beep, and then I pause one second, and then I repeat this five times. And I start with a clear screen at the, at the start of the code. So let's ex execute this code. So notice there were five beeps produced and I have five times uh, I print the, the word beep to the screen. Now to better understand what MATLAB is doing here, it's useful to use a debugging technique. And with debugging, you can halt the execution of the program at any point in time. So note these dashes here on the editor window. These are points in which you can interrupt the execution of the program. So for example, I can click here and note I, uh, this red dot appears. This is called a breakpoint. Now the next time I run this code, so I type in, click on run, see this uh, green arrow emerging? This is where the program is halting its execution at the moment. So this is the point where this, this line has not been evaluated yet, and I can step through line by line. So I click on the step button, and now I'm about to execute this, uh, this line. So let's click step again. Okay, so now a beep was produced, and let's click again. See, now this uh, fprintf statement was uh, executed. And now we pause for one second. And note if we step again, the program goes back to, uh, to do another iteration through this, this loop, because in this for loop, we again repeat this, uh, these actions five times. And so you can step through through this program and if you want to exit this, this debugging mode, you just press this button, quit uh, debugging. And if you don't want the program to halt anymore, you just uh, click on this red dot again to undo these uh, breakpoints. So the next time you run, you just basically uh, execute the program without inter any interruption. Now in the next example code, I wanna show you how we can actually uh, change some aspects of this loop to make it longer or shorter, and how we can also use the uh, value of the indicator variable or the, the looping variable itself. So in this code, I start by declaring n equal to three, and that's the number of iterations uh, I would like to use in my for loop. So now instead of saying one to three, I can use one to n, and now n is basically a value set to three, but note I can basically change the number of iterations in this loop uh, by just using a variable. Now the other thing you can do is use the value of i itself. So i is a variable that's dynamically changing every time you execute this loop. And so I can, I can count things. I can say print me to the screen 
uh, which beep it was of the total number of beeps. So in this formatted string, uh, in this formatted uh, fprintf command, the result is that I get the output to the screen beep one or three, two, three, three or three. Uh, note here that I here is not a fixed value. Uh, it's constantly changing every time we enter through a new a new iteration. And we can also see this if we interrupt the flow of the program by putting a breakpoint here, we run it. Now the program halts here as indicated by the green arrow. And we can actually hover with the cursor over the various variables in this program. So I here is a double variable one by one and it's currently the value one because it's the first time we enter the loop and I starts with one. Now if I continue then I continued execution until the next time I hit the red breakpoint, which is the next iteration. Now I equals two, right? Because I go from one to two, and then I click continue again. And now I equals three, and that's the last part of the loop. And now if I click continue, we finished uh, the program. Now to show you another example of how to use for loops, we can actually process vectors or values of vectors within a for loop. Suppose in this example we have a vector x which has seven values. Now let's suppose that these values represent temperatures uh, of the seven days in a week. We can print out the individual values of this vector by using a for loop. So in this case the for loop starts uh, with the value one and it goes to the value seven corresponding to the seven days of the week. And now we use this formatted uh, printing command where I print out the temperature on day. And this is the uh, placeholder for I uh, was percent D. And this is the placeholder for the value for the value of X at position I. Now keep in mind again, I is dynamically changing. Uh, so I starts at one and then goes to two, goes to three. And so what you're printing here is the first value of X, the second value of X, the third value of X. So if we execute this, we can see that we get a nice formatted output. Temperature on day one was 72, 70, etc. And this corresponds exactly to this uh, sequence of values in the vector X. Now to give another example, we can also change the we can change the output of the program to include various strings uh, and inputs from or values from uh, cell arrays. So here I declare a cell array that just contains the uh, days of the week. And now I use a formatted output, fprintf statement, where I say the temperature on, and this is a placeholder for a string, so note the percent %s was percent %d, this is the placeholder for a, an integer. And now I use days, used uh, and the curly brackets and i is an index into the cell array days. So again, i is changing from one to seven. So I'm reading out the values of this cell array from one to seven. So from Monday all, to, all the way to Sunday. And the output of this uh, script is as follows, the temperature on Monday was 72, the temperature on Tuesday was 70, etc. Now here's a more complex example. For loops don't have to involve just a single loop, but also can also involve multiple loops nested within each other. So for example, suppose I have uh, the temperatures not just for a single week, but now I have a matrix. So the first row is the temperature on week uh, on week one. The second row are the temperatures of seven days in week two, etc. and on for, for week three. Now suppose I just want to read out the values of this matrix and create some nice uh, formatted output. Now here I created a double for loop. So here I use one indicator variable j that's for the outer for loop, and I have another for loop with an indicator variable i. So you can give these uh, indicator variables any name you want. Uh, typical names are i and j and k, these lowercase uh, variables. And this outer loop basically loops over the three weeks, 
uh, the three rows that I have in X. The inner loop here loops over the seven days, so the seven columns uh, in this matrix. Now, if I execute this, this code, what you can see is that uh, I basically start with week one, so it's printing out week J on the screen. So that's the first time you enter this loop J equals one, and then you execute this loop, uh, so it goes from one to seven, and I'm reading out the value of X at row J, column I, right? So row J is the uh, indicator for the outer loop. J I is the indicator for the inner loop. So in other words, it's the week and day. And once this loop is finished, the inner loop, I go back to the outer loop to J and increment that by one. And we can see this in action if we uh, set a breakpoint here. So the first time we enter j equals one, and now we enter into this I loop, and I'm constantly clicking the step button to step through. So you notice how we're constantly inc incrementing I. Once we're done with this loop, we, end, we go to this end statement, and we go back to this j, increment that by one, etc. So basically, uh, that's the nature of a double for loop. Um, the inner for loop is executed first, and then once we uh, finish with this inner loop, we go back to the outer loop again. Now, I want to give you one more example. Uh, suppose I would like to do some calculations uh, that are not easy to do using a standard MATLAB function. Now, suppose I want to calculate a factorial. Um, Factorial actually is a MATLAB function, so the factorial of seven is this number. Um, now, to remind you what exactly is a factorial again, so the factorial seven is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, right? So we're multiplying uh, these numbers. As I said, there is a function called factorial to help you out calculating these things, but you can also use a for loop to get this result. And this is illustrated in this script over here. I start by saying I want the result for n equals 7. Start by initializing the result at 1, and I have a loop with indicator variable i that goes from 1 to n. And anytime when I execute and when I do one iteration in this loop, I multiply my new value of result equals the old value of result times i. So basically I'm updating a computation every time I enter into this, every time I execute one iteration of this for loop. So if I execute this code, I get exactly the desired result. If I do this seven times, then the result will basically be 5,040, uh, which is the same as when I just manually calculate the factorial uh, seven factorial, or when I use the function factorial seven. Uh, 